Uh, it's a great pleasure to uh, introduce the last speaker um, of the evening, who is uh, Ms. Brandy Williams. Uh, Brandy's one of the people that you will really want to get to know um, as you start building your resume. Um, she joined the, uh, the Arts and Sciences Career Services Office in 2005 as a job search advisor, and in September 15, she, uh, 2015, she assumed the role of career preparation advisor. She also serves as the liaison to the Arts and Science Recruitment and Diversity Office and holds a bachelor's degree in psychology from Catholic University and a master's of labor in human, uh, human resources from uh, Ohio State's uh, Fisher School of uh, uh, College of Business. So, Brandy, please take it away. Hi. Well, good evening and thanks for having me. Um, so thus far, you've heard a lot about um, several exciting careers, um, you've heard about the importance of having um, great experience and skills and competencies. So in my office, our goal is to help you put all those puzzle pieces together. Um, so to help you identify how to get to the particular career that you have an interest in. Um, to help you identify you know, what experiences can you attain and how do you find those particular resources and connect to employers. Um, so you know, I am a career prep advisor. And so in my role, I can, you know, we can sit down, have an appointment, and kind of just address any questions you might have, um, give you guidance specific to your needs. Now, one of the first steps to ut utilizing our services is to have your resume reviewed. So by a show of hand, hands, how many have a resume or have been to our office before? Okay, not bad, very good. All right, so that will be your first step. Um, and then once your resume is reviewed and approved, you can meet with myself or one of our other career prep advisors. Now, in your folder, there are several handouts that will be beneficial to you. One of them that I want to point out, actually, if I have time, I will sh share each of them. But one of them is on the purple form, and it's, are you career ready? So this is really significant because it goes over the different competencies that employers look for. So there's an association called um, NACE, which stands for the National Association of Colleges and Employers. And each year, um, they do a variety of surveys of employers. So they ask them, you know, what type of skills are they looking for on a resume? Um, what type of competencies are they looking for in their candidates, specifically undergraduate students? And so this handout, goes over each of those particular competencies that the employers have identified. So the way that you can use this, um, it gives you a, like a definition of each of the competencies and then highlights a variety of different ways of actually enhancing, developing, and maintaining that competency. And all the examples are either something that you um, can get access to that's on campus or something that's fairly close to campus, all right? And you'll notice that the competencies that are highlighted were mentioned today. So like communication skills, critical thinking, stuff along teamwork, um, things along those lines. So that's really significant because your experience is valuable, but having those transferable skills so an employer knows that you know, what you gain can transfer to their particular organization. And then it was also mentioned earlier um, that you know the skills are significant, but also having that self-awareness, and so being able to communicate that to an employer. Because you can look wonderful on paper, but if you're not able to communicate that, then it can really be a hindrance to you, all right? So that's one beneficial resource. Another pertaining to experience, so how many are familiar with FutureLink or have utilized FutureLink? Okay, all right. So FutureLink is our online jobs and internship database. It also has experience related to research, um, volunteer opportunities, pretty much all forms of experiential learning. So the pink handout gives a brief overview of FutureLink, and then at the very top there, it highlights several internships that are currently in the system. So you're not limited to these by any means but just for the purpose of showing you the variety of opportunities that exist. And so whether you want to work in government, you want to do something with business or nonprofit, you know, that opportunity is at your fingertips. 
but it's just a matter of you taking the steps now, not waiting until you're a senior, um, but starting now to actually get that exposure and that experience. And even if you are a senior, that's fine. We're here to help you out so we can still identify opportunities to help you build your resume, okay? Um, and aside from actually getting an experience, we have a number of um, career and employer events such as career fairs, information sessions, where you can meet with employers one-on-one, -on -one, build your network, and you know enhance those relationships with employers. Okay. So that's um, the yellow handout highlights a variety of different job paths for history majors. So again, you are you know there's several um, sectors that you can work in, and this kind of highlights various job titles the particular locations as far as businesses uh, that are available. So if anything, like say you're kind of not sure what you want to do, but perhaps a particular title um, or this description of Pierce sound, sounds of interest to you, you could take a moment to maybe just explore those particular occupations. Like the Occupational Outlook Handbook is a resource where you can search various occupations by title and it gives you a lot of background. It shares you know, how to get in that particular field. It identifies related career fields. So just so you can understand the variety of what exists for you. Okay. So internships are significant. Also, your coursework is significant. I mentioned volunteering. All that is going to be beneficial. So the green form is constructing your career plan. So what we've done here is pinpointed uh, just various tasks, suggestions, activities to consider between now and graduation. And so you'll see the columns pertain to career, academics, and beyond the classroom. Because it's because your experience is a mixture of everything. All right? So you may not do everything that's on, you know, both pages. You may not do anything in order, that's fine. That's not the purpose of it. But it's just to highlight, you know, make you aware of the opportunities and experiences that are available to you and that will be beneficial for your future. Okay, because ultimately you want to make sure that you're preparing so that you're more competitive. And it is, it can be overwhelming. Um, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but just know that you don't have to do that on your own. Okay. In our office, we send a lot of different emails, you know, out. I'm sure each of you may have gotten some before. And the key is just not to delete them. Because, <laughs> I mean, I know you get lots of emails from a little bit of everybody on campus. But, you know, take a minute, kind of scan what we're, you know, offering to you, what we're trying to market, and see if it's something you want to consider. Okay. Uh, also, so as you are applying for positions, you know, you get that call back and it's time for an interview. So one, another resource that we offer are mock interviews. And so with the mock interview, we would um, ask that you provide for us a sample job description. So maybe you do have actual interview lined up and maybe you just want to get some practice. Either is fine, but we would still ask for that job description. And so then we can tailor the questions that we ask you to something that will be more realistic, all right? So I have these little half sheets. They are not in your folder, but if you're interested, you're more than welcome to take one of those. So that just explains the process when you go to the website of how to actually schedule a mock interview. A handout that is in your folder is the blue interview preparation checklist. So, you know, sometimes we're not quite sure of the steps that we need to take to prepare for an interview. Okay, so it's not just a matter of showing up, right? It's a lot that you gotta do in advance. And so this takes you step by step before, during, and after an interview. Um, one thing that sometimes we forget to do is to send a thank you email after your interview. And that is significant, because that can make a difference between you and the next candidate. 
you may stand out because the employer sees that you took the time that you're really interested in the position. And so, you know, you took that time to thank them for their time and consideration. So that is what this handout consists of. Um, and then also sometimes when you're interviewing, we maybe, you, I guess kind of forget what you want to say because you're excited about the opportunity um, and you have a lot that you want to get out there, but it kind of just all fades away or you just feel like you're rambling, okay? So a handout, another handout that's not in your folder is this behavioral-based interviews handout, so feel free to grab one of those if you're interested. And what that is, um, it just highlights how to answer questions, because nine times out of ten, the questions that you are being asked are either going to be a situational question or behavioral-based. So what would you do in this situation, or tell me about a time when you had to do this, that, or the other. So what this handout is highlighting is the STAR technique, and that stands for Situation, Task, Action, and Results. So it just allows you to kind of think through your question, I mean the question in advance, and what your response might be. So on the very front, it gives an example of what it looks like to use the STAR technique. And then on the back, it allows you to practice in advance. So say you were applying for um, an IT position. <clears throat> so then you'd need like analytical skills, right? Um, and so that could be one of the skill sets or dimensions that you highlight in this box. And then you would think in advance of examples where you had to use that particular skill, all right? So for whichever skills that are highlighted in the position description under the qualification section, you can pinpoint those and then provide that scenario. So then it's just easier for you to think through what your response might be. Okay. So that's kind of a quick snapshot of what we have to offer. Um, like I mentioned, the first step is to stop in during our walk-in hours, and those are Monday through Friday, 9.30 to 2.30. If you're not able to make it in, so walk-in hours, we do review resumes electronically. So we try to make it as convenient for you as possible. All right. Um, and then once you've gone to do that, you can meet with the career prep advisor. And we encourage you to come in to have your resume reviewed at least once a semester, especially if you're, you know, adding more experience each semester. Um, and then just to have a second set of eyes to take a look at your resume.